All right, guys, back uh, for uh, Zygmunt Bauman and the Experience of Postmodernity, Part 2. In this, we are going to tackle ethics and communities. So if you're not watching this straight away after the last uh, video, Bauman, Part 1, um, Zygmunt Bauman says the postmodern world is qualitatively different than the modern world. Um, it is unstable and unpredictable and complex. And as a result of that, as we talked about in the last video, um, it's hard to form a stable identity. What ends up happening instead, um, and for the first time in world history, is that people are assembling, then learning more as the ground, the world un shakes under them, disassembling their identities and reassembling it in another way. Um, and this is, as we're going to see at the end, this is not a bad thing necessarily. He has concerns about it, but it's uh, it's it's more just this is the reality of living in the postmodern world. All right, so that was our his first sort of thing that he wanted to talk about in terms of the experience was identity. Second one is ethics. Ethics meaning uh, a sort of code for how you treat other people and how you conduct yourself in the world. And he says, okay, so here's the thing. The world is complex and it's unpredictable. And for Bauman, and you don't have to buy this, I am 50-50 on this, but it's worth learning about and it's worth thinking about. He says, since we're not in the modern world where everything is stable, instead we have got to have a moral code that embraces ambivalence and embraces contradictions. We don't live in a consistent world like the modern world, well, at least we were told it was. Um, so if we live in a, in a postmodern world that's unpredictable and that's complicated, and we have to embrace ambivalence, which is not what ethics are about. Ethics are about standards for behavior. Well, how can you have a standard of behavior if you feel uh, not totally sure about things or really strongly, but in two different directions? Uh, how do you create an ethical code? Or if you are aware of the fact that there are going to be contradictions in your perspective on life because you're assembling and disassembling and reassembling this identity. In a world of ambivalence and a world of contradictions, how do you come up with ethical standards that will guide your behavior? That's a, a reasonable question. Again, I'm not totally sure I completely buy it, but I'm willing to go with him on this journey. He says, this is how he says, this is how you do it. He says, you've got to start from these premises. Premise one, there are no absolutes. That will rub a lot of you the wrong way. But he says, Look, we keep learning new things. We thought that the world worked a certain way. It turns out we were wrong. We've been wrong over and over and over. Who's to say that what we think right now is really the truth? You got to start this creating an ethical code for yourself based on the idea that you don't know, that there aren't absolutes. Um, premise two. You got to start from the premise that people are neither good nor bad. They could go either way, which is a pretty sociologically reasonable perspective. Sociologists believe that um, in the socialization process, you come to develop a conscience. Uh, but that conscience could take uh, lots of different forms based on whether you are born in an, a, a society that is egalitarian or a society that is intensely patriarchal or intensely racist. Um, but the findings that we have from the social sciences say that people aren't good or bad, they are influenceable. Premise three, there are just too many different types of situations to create an ethical code that will cover all of them. Okay, from those three premises, it's not gonna be an easy thing to come up with an ethical code. I mean, there are no absolutes. You're never going to have a code that's going to cover all of the situations. And you don't even know if people are primarily good or primarily bad. So how do you do it? So this is what Bauman does. And I kind of like it. Again, I'm only halfway on this. Um, he says, so base an ethical code on what you know for sure. First thing you know for sure 
is that in any situation where ethics would come into play, you're there and somebody else is there. That seems kind of reasonable, right? Uh, okay, so if that is something that would happen, no matter what else is shaking underneath you as the postmodern world changes, we know we've got you and we know we've got an other person. And he says, while he isn't willing to go all the way to this should be your ethical code, he says, um, being for the other, thinking about your conduct in terms of it being helpful to the other, isn't a foundation exactly, but it should serve as a guidepost for thinking about how to behave ethically. It feels wishy-washy, doesn't it? But given where he started, that the world is in an earthquake and it could be different tomorrow, and if we're not going to be able to build an ethical code on a strong foundation, having a guidepost that says, well, yeah, you're with this other person and you don't know if they're good or bad, and you don't know anything else for certain, kind of tending in the direction of being for them, that's not bad. I mean, it's not satisfying, but Bauman would say, hey, it's the postmodern world. Like, it's not my fault that everything is constantly changing. So, I, you know, again, I don't, I'm not 100% in favor of it, but I think it's, I think it's interesting to think of. And I, and I also, as, as though I am a modernist, as a person who does believe that the postmodern world is constantly shaking under us, I got to admit that I could see, despite the fact that I have a pretty firm moral foundation, I could see losing it. I, I think that's a plausible thing that could happen. And if I did, I could see this as being a reasonable substitute. Um, the second point, so that's his ethical code involves, boom, guidepost is being for the other thinking in terms of what would be helpful or kind to the other. Um, point number two in his, in his postmodern ethical code is just accepting the fact that there are going to be unres unresolvable moral dilemmas. Um, abortion is this way for a lot of people, and I, I'm not at all going to tell you you should think about abortion any other way than you think about abortion. But... There are people who say, on the one hand, uh, a, a fertilized egg is a living organism. And on the other hand, say that a woman should have the right to do with her body what she would like to do with her body. Um, a modernist perspective says, pick, you've got to choose one. There is a, there should be a uniform and um, consistent ethical standard that you apply, and then you come down, you are pro-choice or you're pro-life. Bauman says, why? Like that is, that is a way of thinking for an older time that doesn't exist anymore. He says, you, sh you need to accept the fact that you may be in a situation where you see both sides of that and where you don't know and you shouldn't be upset about it. I mean, it's uncomfortable, but you shouldn't be down on yourself about the fact that you can't resolve that. And I think there's something to that as well. I think that there's something to, to being accepting of ambiguity. Modernism is about the world is knowable. You just have to try harder or think more rigorously or gather more data. Postmodernity says, maybe not. Maybe things are just ambiguous. Maybe you'll never come to the answer. And there is something a little bit liberating in that. I'm not saying that you need to change your thinking. I'm saying that's what Bauman says. Okay, his third point about uh, the experience of being in the postmodern world is about communities. And here's basically what he says. The modern world is about unification. It is about we can know the world, we can understand it, we can create 
a society and make progress and in an ideal way we find truth and we bring everyone involved or everyone not involved everyone along modernity is about unification post-modernity i don't know why too post-modernity is about fragmentation into communities um and he says one of the great things about postmodernity is that we have become much more accepting of different communities. Um, America before the postmodern period is a white supremacist country. Um, that's not super comfortable to say, but you know we 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 obviously went through slavery. Then after slavery, black people are still second-class citizens at best. Um, yeah, they have these rights, but the rights are not real um, because white people can deny them those rights at any particular time. Uh, but in the postmodern world, and not that white supremacy isn't still a problem, but we have not just accepted that there can be the black community that can be the black community, and the Asian community that can be the Asian community and little communities within the Asian community, the Vietnamese community and the Chinese community, that these can be part of America. America can be, you can be American and be a part of this little community. We've gone way beyond that, way beyond anything I would have seen when I was your age. When I was your age, to be LGBTQ was to be in the closet or to be persecuted. There weren't a lot of people who were just out, and I don't want to make it sound like everything's easy, but the acceptance of, of um, all kinds of different communities of people has just increased over the course of time. Um, it doesn't mean all communities are treated equally, but the postmodern world is a, a world in which we are more accepting of difference than we ever have been before. And that's a good thing. Um, however, Bauman was skeptical about tolerance leading to solidarity. He said, okay, so once we start fragmenting, some people will say, yes, we accept and we're together. But other people will say, we're clearly separate and you're not with me and therefore I dislike you. And we've seen that side of it as well um, from 2016 to 2020 in the Trump administration. Um, there was a concerted effort to say there is a right way of being American and a whole bunch of wrong ways. Um, so communities for Bauman can also lead in the direction of not thinking in terms of community, but thinking in terms of tribe, not we are different communities and we can bridge between them, but we are different tribes and we can war between us. Tribalism is sort of the the uh, opposite side, the dark side of the coin of communities. Okay, so that's our experiences. That's Bauman's understanding of the experience of postmodernity. Um, let me end. The modern idea of an objective, knowable reality is gone. Reality is complex, it's contradictory, and it's always changing. And as a result of which we see these uh, different experiences. He says, this is liberating. Um, you can be whoever you want to be. You can assemble an identity. You could try it out. You can say, that doesn't work for me. I'm going to Instead, I'm going, I tried to be Buddhist for a while. That wasn't really working. I'm going to put Buddhism aside and I'm going to become Muslim and give that a try. I'm going to put aside being a CrossFit person and I'm going to become, what else would you become? You'd become a person who, I don't know, runs a lot or something like that. Not a great, but you get what I'm saying. Like you can change. You, you're, you don't have to stay stuck with a particular identity, and that's liberating. Um, you have multiple communities you can join as a result of that, and we're more accepting of that. And so there is a much, there's a much more varied world. Um, 
but the downside of it. We aren't held together by anything in the way that the modern world was about unification. Um, there isn't any ultimate authority to appeal to. And there isn't, there's a lack of belief kind of in permanence that also tends to work against solidarity. This is Bauman's perspective. I, I kind of feel a little bit more hopeful about it than that, but you're not learning Chris's, you know, theory of postmodernity. All right, that's it for Bauman. In our next video, we're going to talk about, uh, about a theorist named Baudrillard, who is going to be a theorist also kind of of the experience of being in the postmodern world, although he is going to be focused specifically on one element, a very important element of the postmodern world, which is consumerism. So I will talk to you about that and with a little bit of luck, do it in one video. Uh, we'll see. All right. See you guys in that one.